Good day. The following presentation will cover correlation to cross-section in 10 minutes with neurosection. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be starting from a fresh database and what we need to start is well data, log data, and geographical data. Now what are we going to get in return? We're going to get in return a project map that displays the wells and cross-section line, correlated logs, and even a presentation cross-section at the end. So we're starting here with the NeuroSection application. It starts with the wizard, as all of our products do. You can set your project, load new data, open existing data, and, uh, and work with your recent work. So what we're going to do first is we have a well base file to start populating our wells in the database. We'll select the data file. What we're going to be loading are headers, tops, faults, location data, as well as product, production tests. So we quickly brought in seven wells. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring in some calibrated rasters. Um, if you've already purchased rasters or calibrated them someplace else, there's no reason to recalibrate them in NeuroSection. So we're going to set onto the folder that has the images in them. And what it's going to be doing is it's going to be matching the API to an API in the project to um, hook them up. We want to bring in a couple more logs. These are LAS files. We're going to do it through the batch load because we know that they already have an API associated with them. So it works similar to our calibrated rasters. We'll select to the folder. Say that we want to bring in our logs and our well headers. And there it shows that two have found APIs in our database. Now once we brought in our log data, we're going to go to our project map. Now this shows both all the wells that have been imported in, as well as it showing us the ones in red are the ones that I've brought in logs, with the list at the bottom. Now the one in black means that it, no, it does not have a log associated with it yet. You also see that we have a few deviated wells. Now what we want to do is we want to bring in some map data. We brought in some shape files. We're going to set the colors, but you can also bring in some um, calibrated TIFF images as well as DXF files. So once we change the colors, make them a little nicer, we're going to go and project our map. It starts as geodetic lat long. We're going to change it to state plane, Texas South Central, and set the units to U.S. feet. So now we have a little a nicer map to look at. We can see our lease blocks, some faults, some contouring that's been done. So what we want to do now is select the wells that we want to work with during correlation. Now you'll notice as we select wells on the map, the logs will come to the top of the list at the bottom. So we're going to select our line of section and we're going to create a new cross section. And that will help give us kind of a thumbnail view of when we're doing the correlation um, of how you're doing. So since they've already been calibrated, all we need to do is set our interval we're going to go from negative 7,500 to minus 8,600. We're going to set our scale to 2.5. Everything is normalized whether or not you have a 5 inch log, a 1 inch log. It can all be normalized to whatever your desired value is. So the first thing we see at the bottom is we see our six wells that we brought in. Four of the six have already been correlated and we still have two left to do. So I'm going to go ahead and move those to the right, and you'll see as I move the logs at the top, you see that the cross-section uh, reorders itself and reconnects the profiles that we already had there. we do a couple little things before we go into our correlation mode. We're going to scroll all of our logs to minus 8,000 TVD sub C. Now our scroll to dialog here, you can scroll to a surface, a fault, a generic correlation point, or just a depth, and it'll scroll all of your logs. What we want to do is we're going to move the tops out of the way for the moment, or the labels out of the way. So you just highlight one and move it over, and everything follows suit and lines up. Now we have the six logs here, but we're now we want to go into correlation mode. Now you'll notice a couple things in correlation mode. We've lost our frames, so they're nicely side by side. It also displays a well header at the top of each of your images. 
The images and LAS files now can be moved around freely in order to help line up and um, find your SANS of interest. Since we already have four of them correlated, we're just going to use one as our tie log. So we're going to use our white errors and we want to first correlate the Russell Payne image on the right. Now in correlation mode, all of the logs are normalized. The zoom rate stays constant, so as you zoom in or out, everything stays on the same, um, on the same page. So what we just did is we um, scrolled to our F12. Now even though there is not an F12 in the Russell Payne log, the Russell Payne log is scrolled to the same true vertical depth to kind of get you close to what the sand you may be correlating. So let's go ahead. Now what you, what you see is uh, if you select a top on the mini strap panel on the left, that's the top that will be used in the um, to be added to the log. Now if you don't select any of them, it will go down the strat column in order. So we're going to go pick a couple more. So there's our F15, our F15A. Scroll down some more. The B and F16C uh, or the F15C. Now we're going to, so we have a couple left on here, and actually the F16 is going to be the surface that we're going to highlight when we create our cross section at the end of this presentation. So we're going to put the base or the top of the F16A in. So now that we've nicely correlated the uh, Russell Payne log, let's go back into our list and we'll turn Russell Payne off and turn on the State Track 39. So as we see, we can do the same thing. We'll go back to the top and scroll to our F12. Move our image, trying to find a nice curve to help correlate with. Now this image isn't quite as nice as the image that we have before, so it may um, take a little bit more work. We also have um, a correlation point mode, and what those are are just generic markers that can be used um, to help in your correlation, and those at the end of the day or you know, can also be changed into a surface um, if needed be. So we'll go down, we have the F14, that's pretty good, and it looks like the F15. Now if you look in the area here, all of a sudden we have a log that's kind of um, washed out. And so we're going to turn on our generic correlation mode and kind of put in a couple that we think, you know, might work there. So move that one, we'll put in a couple tie points. Now we're going to, once we turn off the correlation mode, we'll go back and continue correlating our log for what we know. Put in the C, again the F16, we'll scroll to to bring everything down, and the F16A to the base. So now we want to go back and see what we have. So let's go ahead and back to our list, and we're going to turn all of our wells back on, and go back into the auto arrange mode. So as we can see now, all, all of our tops have been picked, they're automatically connected. And so what we want to do is, like I said before, we want to highlight that F16 sand. So we're going to fill the zone down to the F16A. We're going to set the lithology as sandstone. And then we're going to fill the inner well zones as well. So once we have that, let's do a couple things just to make the cross section nice. And so we're going to go to the header, and we're going to do a couple cosmetic things. We're going to add a fill and some borders. We're going to um, make the symbols a little bit smaller. And all of this can be applied to either a single well in the cross section or all of them. So let's also, let's um, add a title block. Now the title block is totally custom is customizable. You can put in your own company's uh, logo, you can add the fonts, and it's optional. So even if you had a bitmap that you always use as a standard in your company, you can bring that in through the picture tool. We're going to change the borders a little bit, so 
make room for um, our header and just to get it ready for our presentation. We're going to change the outside border. Let's make it blue and increase the thickness a little. And so all we're really doing here is, you know, giving ourselves a little nicer presentation quality. A couple other things we want to do is let's change this to a stratigraphic cross section. So we're going to flatten on our F16. And now we're going to go ahead and add a header. Now the different things that are available in the montage are, you know, you have full annotation tools, you have, um, you have freeform drawing, you can bring in any picture, that's a TIFF, a JPEG, a Metafile, or a bitmap. You can also copy and paste from any Windows application into here. So say you have a well report or something in Excel or someplace else, you can copy it and place it in the montage. So we're going to do a couple more changes. Move it back into place. And before we finish, let's turn this into a um, geoproportional cross-section. We're going to normalize all the images or all of our logs to four and a half inches in spacing, or not in spacing, in width. And we're going to fix our offsets. All of these features happen on the fly. So here we have, we've come and have this nice cross section that we started virtually with no data at the beginning. So what we've done is we've imported in our data, uh, we've correlated two of our logs, and we ended up with a cross section. This cross section can be saved, of course, within NeuroSection, can be saved as a TIFF or JPEG, and um, copy and paste it into any Windows application, and it can even be saved as an Adobe PDF file for um, easy email sending or easy distribution. So how did I get here? Well, I got here with easy data loading, simple map interface, custom well order ordering, quick flexible correlation, and many on-the-fly tools that we have in our cross-section itself. So we literally went from correlation to cross-section in just minutes. When purchasing any Neurolog product like NeuroSection, we have an incredi incredible training, consulting, and support that comes with it as well. We have a new training center in our Neurolog office in Houston, but we will also schedule on-site training with customized classes using your data. Our support team is dedicated and we're available by phone, email, and online. Thank you for watching this presentation. Please take a look at our website to find other products and presentations you may be interested in. Thank you.